power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, somebody declared this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm so glad you're watching today on behalf of Teresa Cirillo and Don Mandel, Mark Masson, our entire legacy team. This is Greg Marr welcoming you to your beautiful Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center campus. We cannot wait for the day that you will come and set your feet on these incredible grounds. Today, Don, we're in the 500 seat Pavilion Theater. This is where the schools of ministry will happen. This is where conferences will take place. This is where nights of worship and praise and even movies. This is an incredible multifaceted facility. And Don, more than anything, I feel the power and the presence of God in this place. Yes, God is a God of locations. Yes. Abraham had an altar to the Lord. There was, of course, nothing accidental can happen in Jerusalem. And this is a place that God is smiling on through our people's prayers and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And we can wait to see you coming in this place and minister to you and all together rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. You know what, Mark, I'm excited about and Don, is that this September the 4th, we will do something we have never done before, but we'll be conducting right from this theater. And I want to encourage you, use the link and get registered for the first ever virtual worldwide School of Ministry from Legacy. Pastor Benny Hinn will be here. Pastor Io is joining us by a very, very special live link. Steve Muncy will be here. 
Mama Teresa Cirillo will be bringing a very special word. You cannot miss one session. Mark will be ministering. Don will be preaching. And God has given me a word, Don. I am so excited about what the Lord is going to release through the School of Ministry. And then we've been seeing this now for months on Facebook, but there was a message in the heart of Brother Cirillo that he was ready to release at this worldwide school of ministry. And so we have located a stream of messages from Brother Cirillo's incredible legacy that I believe are going to bring us on a real cutting edge breakthrough. A school of ministry is a school with a difference. We begin on Friday, September 4th. We'll have the great opening service You'll see the schedule right there on your Facebook page and you'll get the schedule when you register. You'll know who is speaking, when they're speaking. So please use the link, get registered. The opening session is going to be very, very special. Teresa Cirillo will be in the house. We're gonna have a very special time to honor the legacy and the life of Morris Cirillo. It will not be the grand, glorious worldwide tribute service that will happen in January, Lord willing, here at Legacy during the World Conference and the Legacy dedication, but there'll be a very special time to honor Brother Cirillo and then Pastor Tommy Barnett, who is a very precious member of our board of directors. You know him, he is a pastor's pastor, the founder of the Dream Center. And pastor Tommy will be bringing a very special message on Friday night to kick off the School of Ministry and then Saturday and Sunday morning, afternoon, and evening. And then Don and Mark, I'm excited about this. We've never done anything like this before, but Monday morning is going to be a virtual anointing service. And I wanna just, yeah, I wanna encourage you. Not only, yeah, be ready in the spiritually ready, I know you're talking about, but also have your olive oil ready. And we'll talk to you about that. But I am believing that there is going to be a mass miracle there's going to be a mass impartation of oh, the yes. anointing of god mark and, i know and, you're and excited about greg it. greg this is so prophetic you know we are truly in a time of transition dr serilo is not with us anymore he went to be with the lord so we are in a transition time but do you remember when dr serilo was teaching us the transfer of the mantle from elijah to elisha and he said if you could only see me. That was, that was the pre-request. That was the condition Jesus. for you to receive the mantle of the prophet. He said, if you could only see me. And I know that these beautiful, wonderful viewers that have attended the school of ministry for days and days and weeks and weeks, you have seen something in the spiritual world. You have seen the heart and the spirit of your father, Dr. Murray Cerillo, and you are ready to receive the mantle. This school of ministry, this virtual school of ministry is your appointment with destiny. And you know, Don, also this school of ministry is a fulfillment of the word of the Lord to Morris Cirillo. When this Legacy Center was built, it was built not on just a cement foundation. It wasn't just built in the grounds here, but it was built on a word from God. And that word is this ministry will never die. And Don, we're experiencing yes. that every day on yes. Facebook. Well, we're experiencing also, you know, God has surprises. When they took that man and threw him into the tomb of, Eli of Elisha, they thought they were just running away, but they didn't realize that he was gonna hit the bones and jump up on his feet, because mm. that's the testament that's the de declaration mm. of God. First Corinthians 15, 45 says very clearly, the first Adam was a living soul, but the last Adam, Jesus, a life-giving spirit. And mm. so this stream and Greg, the way uh, Dr. Srillo, because I was conscious of it, took you aside and gave you 
the focus and articulated the stream that's gonna be coming into people's lives, and I don't wanna give it away, but let me just tell you, the devil is not happy about it. That's, no, I can say that. No, no, I can a say that much. Absolutely. Specifically, he's not happy about it. No, because, And with good reason. You know, the same thing he thought when Jesus was put into the grave, that there was going to be a decrease and there was gonna be a fading away, but the devil did not know, but that the death they of would Jesus, not have crucified they the wouldn't, Lord of glory. exactly, they would that's exactly right. Yes. And the impact of this school of ministry and the life of Morris Cirillo, I want you to know something that we stand here today and until the Lord takes me home, my passion is to connect you with the life with the anointing of who I believe is the most remarkable man that ever lived. I know I am a little bit biased, but I got to know this man, the three of us over a hundred years of experience by the side of Dr. Morris Cirillo. We could stand here and talk about Morris Cirillo all day and all night, but all I wanna say to you is don't miss the virtual school of ministry. There is no cost to register but we want you to register so that we can begin to get you the information that you will need so that you know when in your time zone, what is happening, who is speaking. Pastor Benny is going to conduct a very special miracle healing service on Saturday night. And you're gonna be taken all throughout the campus of this Legacy Center. We're gonna take your prayer needs to the uh, Western Wailing Wall, and you're gonna have times just like in our school of ministry meetings when we would be in Chicago or we would be in London or we would be in Lego. So wherever we would be, we would have those times of breakthrough prayer at the beginning of the services. You're gonna have that experience when you connect virtually with this worldwide school of ministry. Well, we're standing in front of something else and then we got to get into the message today. And uh, that is a vision that Brother Srillo had for several years before Brother Srillo went home to be with the Lord. And that was a mandate, Don, that I know you are very, very involved in and Mark as well, and I am to a lesser extent, but it's to raise up an army of one yeah, lesser extent, but you go also all over North America. Right. He's being modest. But thank you, Jesus. A hundred associate ministers. And I think you're feeling just what's been happening on this Facebook page, that that importation was not just for one or for two. God didn't say to Morris Cirillo, son, build me a successor. He said, son, build me an army of successors. The devil does not like that. The devil would love it if Morris Cirillo would have just raised up one person because then he could focus. But God has used this ministry to raise up an incredible army. And we want to encourage those of you that would like when this whole traveling, we want to encourage those of you that would like when the traveling begins to open up, which we believe it will be soon. And you would like to host a night or several nights of impartation and miracles with one of Brother Cirillo's associate ministers like Mark or like Don or like myself. I want you to use the form on the Facebook page. Let us know who you are. Let us know where you are from and uh, where your church is. And we would like to get information to you and answer your questions. Yes, and Greg, under the right conditions, they could even form a committee and we could discuss a school of ministry and crusade coming to their city. Right, right. So yeah, if this is a burden of your heart and you maybe don't have a church that seats 500 people or 1,000 people or even 200 people, but you have a burden for this anointing Mark, you have been going even during the last several years as Brother Srillo has sent you as one example of an associate minister, the same power, the same presence, the same miracles, and you're never gonna be the same. I'm never gonna be the same, and the people that were attending those meetings will never be the same, and truly, the mantle of Dr. Cirillo is released each time we do those school of ministry we call it Legacy Breakthrough Summit because this is really bringing the legacy of the servant of God and it brings a breakthrough and it's a summit because we are on the top of the mountain and I have seen hundreds and hundreds of people giving their life to the Lord. I have seen 
blind see, I have seen death here, I have seen lame <coughs> standing up from their wheelchair, I have seen demon cast out, and you can see that now, right now on the video, God is alive today. Oh, and God. you know, Hallelujah. just that, that past week, three pastors from France and from um, the French island told me, Mark, we really have a burden in our heart to add in the curriculum of our Bible school an entire teaching of Dr. Maurice Cerullo. And I believe some people listening to us might consider doing that also in their own Bible school. So we just want to connect. And I, I just want to throw in very quickly, and you can show the, you can see the picture. When Mark went to French Guiana, he didn't just have a tremendous rally and miracles and teaching, but he raised up the chairman, Theo Losin, who went to Africa to Benin. And he, in turn, had a tremendous fruit and miracles. So when you host this, uh, uh, this uh, Legacy Summit, don't limit what you're going to receive and the impact it's going to have on your life as well. You know, Don and Mark, I believe that there will be places that we will go and not just have a conference or a summit, but I have seen a vision and I've seen a man in that vision by the name of Mara Cirillo. And when he would go into nations, he would go for miracles and signs and wonders and the greatest miracle is salvation. And we are ready by the grace of God to come alongside of you, to join our heart with your heart, our hand with your hands. And like Don and Mark said, bring a committee together for great nights of mass evangelism, crusades, miracles, signs, wonders. We believe that it's not the work of a man, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit of the living God. And we have been seeing the same things that Mark is talking about, the same things that Don is talking about, the same things that Io is talking about, and so many other sons and daughters, as we have gone to the cities of America. But I believe that this is God's time, that this gospel shall not just be preached in America, but shall be preached in every nation and then the end shall come and so we are excited to see the legacy of Mara Cirillo not just fulfilled here on these 18 acres but Mark I'm ready and I'm Don I'm excited for the day that we will go and be with you on the four corners of the earth so please let us know who you are let us know if you have that passion you have that burden you have that vision Use the little form that's on the Facebook page. Let us know who you are, and then we'll connect with you. We'll answer your questions. And by the grace of God, we'll see something great happen in your city, happen in your church, happen in your nation. Not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zon, I'm excited today. I mentioned to the people yesterday, Monday, we're beginning Virtual School of Ministry number five on Facebook and YouTube, Miracle Power Living. By now you have received your quiz for Revelation Faith. If you didn't get it, check your spam folder in your email. And if you don't have it, please comment on the Facebook page and we will make sure we get the quiz to you. And so you'll take these next several days with the review notes links to all of the sessions. And then by this weekend, have your quizzes back to us. Don, this is gonna be our biggest quiz yet. 62 questions are on this quiz because Brother Trillo downloaded some incredible revelation on faith. And I can't wait for us to get into Miracle Power Living. I wanna encourage if you don't have the Miracle Book yet, there's a link on the page right now. Get that so that you're ready starting on Monday that, to go right from course to course. Of course, if you'd like to get the full bundle that has all of the books for the remaining five, uh, six virtual school of ministry courses, including Miracle Power Living, go ahead and do that. Don, I just want you to say a word about Io because it's an incredible story. Io came here to San Diego in the 1970s participated in a school of ministry, just like somebody is today, yes. had about $100 to his name, and God just transformed yes, his life. Yes, his, his encounter actually started 
in Lagos in a library. He found copies of oh, the yes. uh, a Deeper Life magazine, Brother Srillo's magazine, and that stirred him for a young man with almost no money, just the fact that he got a visa. And he was part of our first batch, the 1979 El Cortez School of Ministry, six months at the feet of the Holy Spirit, and then literally taking back not taking back missionary support, not taking back a notebook telling him what to do, but taking back the impartation. He began to operate in the miraculous, but also in so much else you learn from this school. You learn about unity in the spirit. You learn about uh, discovering your ministry. It's not just putting just power, it's leadership, it's mentorship. And so God used him, first of all, to establish some phenomenal uh, church work in Wari. Then he rose up and was made head of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, which is an amazing uh, umbrella organization that touches millions of believers but then he took an unprecedented step God did in making him the head also of the Christian Association of Nigeria, the umbrella organization that is also over the Catholics and over the Anglicans. So remember, he that honors me, God says, I will honor. And this was for a divine purpose. It was so that he could make known that which he had received through the life of his papa, Dr. Morris Rillo. I can't wait. And I just want to encourage every one of us that are watching today what God did for Io God wants to do for you there is a mantle there is an impartation of promotion upon the Morris Cirillo School of Ministry this is not a school for just head knowledge but it's a school for experience I declare that your promotion is in motion it's not by might or by power. It's not God depending on anything that you possess, but God depending on what you are letting him make of you. And you are opening your spirit. You're connecting every day with this mantle, with this anointing. And I declare that you and I will never be the same again. It's a joy today to present our dear friend, one of Brother Cirillo's precious of five million plus spiritual children in the world. I want you to join me today in welcoming God's servant, Pastor Ayo Oritsijafor, as he comes in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Everybody, take your Bible in your hand. Deuteronomy 7. 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, and there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Father, this is your word. Let every child, every boy, girl, man, and woman that hears the sound of my voice be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let no one live here the same way they came. Do what you know how to do best. Use your word and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, let me hear that amen very powerfully. I said, let me hear that amen again very powerfully. One more time over here. Let me hear that amen again very powerfully. God bless you. You may be seated now. My message this morning is titled Something Happened. I, I, I even feel strange with that title. But that's what God put on my heart. Something Happened. Now, if you if you look at that word, barren, 
ordinarily it means a woman who cannot conceive and give birth to a child. But when you look at that word more broadly, it means unproductive. For example, if you look at 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible speaks of a land that was barren. So barrenness is not limited to a woman or a man. It's just anything or anyone that is unproductive. And, 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 and this is what the Holy Spirit put on my heart. As I was preparing to come here. That I will meet in this hall today. Men and women that represent ministries that are unproductive. There are lives here that are unproductive. There are relationships that are unproductive. There are jobs, there are professions, there are careers that are unproductive. There are many hearing the sound of my voice. You have lived a life that is unproductive. But you know, what really pains one is that sometimes when you look around you, you see people who are productive. And you start wondering, why am I not productive? If I be a man of God, I was sent to you to tell you that your days of being unproductive will end here today. today. If you believe it, I want your amen to be the loudest in the building. God is going to take out that thing that makes you unproductive. That is not the will of God. That devil is a liar. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. You will be productive. You must be productive. If you believe it, jump up and shout yes. When you look at First Samuel chapter 1, the Bible begins to tell us of a woman by the name of Hannah who was tormented, humiliated, frustrated by her adversary. Because she was unproductive. Yes, sir. You know, it's not all bad to have adversaries. Oh, I've shocked you. An adversary or adversaries can bring out the best in you. But if you are not careful, adversaries can kill the best in you. Now, 
when you study that first Samuel chapter 1 from not especially from verse 6 where it says and God shot her womb to verse 19 where it says and God remembered her many things happened something is going to happen to you here today oh my god I, I don't think you believe me I said something is going to happen to you here today I, I said something some, something 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 is going to happen to you something 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 is going to happen to you here today if you believe it wave your hand shout yes go ahead wave your hand shout yes 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 Year after, listen now, year after year, Anna came to Shiloh. She came murmuring and she went home with nothing. She was there in 2000, murmuring. Nothing happened. 2010. 2015, 2017, 2018. Nothing happened. Murmuring will do three things to you. Number one, when you murmur, you empower your problem. Number two, when you murmur, you create a wall between you and God. When you murmur, you compel God to give you exactly what you are murmuring about. Numbers 14, 28, God said, as you have whispered in my ears, so will I do to you. May you not get what you murmured for. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think you heard what I said. I don't know if you heard me. I want to hear a very powerful amen. You have come to world conference year after year after year after year. But I promise you, this year is different from last year. Something must happen. Something will happen. If you believe it, shout yes! I can hear you shout yes! things that happened but I'm gonna I'm gonna dwell, dwell on three very quickly and then I'll pray number one for the first time Anna prayed instead of murmuring ladies and gentlemen murmuring changes nothing She prayed. Luke 18 1 says, Men ought always. How many times? I, I can hear you at the I can hear you at the very back. Always to pray. And not to faint. The word faint means to be discouraged. Pray. Pray. In Isaiah 43, in verse 19, God said, Behold, I do a new thing. 
and it shall spring forth would you not know it he said i will make a way in the wilderness and i will make rivers flow in the desert now go to verse 22 the first sentence he said but you have not called upon me in other words you did not pray so that new thing i wanted to do i can't do <laughs> because you did not pray you can talk all you want you can complain all you want you can cry all you want nothing is gonna happen until you pray why must you pray prayer takes you from the natural to the supernatural it changes your level changes your level you are not the same but in verse 11 she prayed I'm, I'm taking my time today a little bit different she prayed a strange prayer that gave me another understanding of prayer all right let me put it in my own words very briefly in verse 11 she said give me a son and I'll give you a prophet. In other words, when you pray, always think, how will God benefit from the answer to this prayer? We always think of me. We don't think of God. She said, give me a son, I'll give you a prophet. That's right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> we think God doesn't need something. He does. You pray and pray sometimes, you never seem to get an answer because you are not bringing God into the picture. It's all about you. Where does God fit into it? Isaiah 41, 21. He said, state your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. In other words, tell me why I should do this. <laughs> Now, Saul pursued David, wanted to kill him, pursued him everywhere. And when you read Psalm 30, verse 9, we begin to have an insight into one of the reasons why David survived Saul. Because he said, of what profit, and, and some of these my own words, but same thing. Of what profit would my blood be when I go down to the pit? Wow. Then he said something. Can the dust praise you? <laughs> Greg, my God. The last part of verse 10, he said, oh Lord. He said, be thou my helper. Now, he, what was David saying? David was bringing God into the whole thing. <laughs> he said, don't just save me for saving me. Save me so I can praise you. You know I'm a praiser. Listen to me. God wants praise, but he can't praise himself. Are you listening to me? David knew that. And he knew he was a praiser. And he said, if you save me, you get a praiser. 
If you let me die, a praiser dies. When you save me, you get something. What will God get when he answers your prayer? If he gives you money, what will you do with the money? All these wonderful prayers you are praying, where does God come in? You know how I was born? My name is Ayo Diddley. My mother went to a small Baptist church and knelt down and said to God, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. That's how, Greg, I was born. I come from, in a sense, a polygamous home. My father had two wives. My mother had the first daughter. In the African culture, you, you've got to have the first son. And my mother was the first wife, but she wanted also the first son. So she went secretly one night to church and cried to God and said, God, I don't just want a son. I want a son that I will give to you. does God fit into your prayer? I know you know how to pray. But where is God in your prayer? Oh God, don't let them take this house from me. Why? Oh God, don't let this ministry close. Why? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching for you to shout, but I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I discovered that many answers to prayer are tied down. Because we refuse to do what we ought to do. Everything you are praying. Where is God? Give me a son. And I'll give you a prophet. And God said. Now you are talking. He said. Wow. So you know I needed a prophet. Okay. Now you are talking. Alright. You can have a son. Because I want a prophet. I know you want your needs met, but have you thought about meeting God's needs? What about God? Is it all about you? About you? About you? What about God? Where is God in this whole thing? Aralamaso, she. So she prayed. Number two, in verse 18, the last part of that verse, the Bible says, her countenance changed from sorrow. If it changed from sorrow, it means it changed to joy. 
But don't forget that she still didn't have the son. In other words, we are looking at a woman of faith. 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 If you want something to happen, then faith must work. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible. Impossible. When the Bible says it's impossible, it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. He that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder. That's faith. Where is your faith? First John 5, 14 and 15. I preached that, those two verses, the whole of last year in my church. Twelve months. This is the confidence that we have in him. Hallelujah. That's faith. But if we ask a few things, anything according to his will, that's another thing there, according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know, there is an if there, because you may not just know. If you don't know, forget it. It's not happening. If we know that he heareth us, we also know. We know. Even before we see it, we know. I know. I've got it. Something has happened. Even when it doesn't look like anything happened, it has happened. God is not a man for him to lie. No, is he the son of man for him to repent? Has God said it? Will he not do it? Has God spoken? Will he not make it good? If you believe it, wave your hand and shout yes! It has happened! We will take what has happened in the spirit and bring it to the physical. It has happened. What you've been struggling for all these years, it has already happened. It has happened. Stop crying. It has happened! 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 If you believe in shout, yes! Look at it, Romans 4:18. Against hope. Abraham believed in hope. Why? That he might be the father of many nations. Faith. Verse 19. Not being weak in faith. He considered not his own body that was now dead. Nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not. Staggered. It's like that book, in, that word in James. A double-minded man is unstable. He was not unstable. He staggered not at the promise of God. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Shamalada namamamba, verse 21. For he was fully persuaded. 
I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. I feel chains breaking. I feel devils running out. I feel sickness leaving your body. That devil is a liar. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a living God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. If you believe it, shout yes! 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 Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Yes. 
eyes are being opened. My God, I feel the fire. I feel the fire. Three quickly. In verse 19, I feel fire no, all over this. Fire. Verse 19, the Bible was talking about Hannah and her family. The Bible says, early in the morning, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Bible says, early in the morning, before they went to their home, they worshiped. It's the same verse that the Bible says at the end of it. And God remembered her. The word worship means a man's expression of his reverence for his God. And there are so many different expressions of worship. 
We don't have the time. I will just mention two and stop. One, when you give, you worship God. Church people don't like to hear that. But it's true. I can prove it again and again and again. In scripture, but even today, in people's lives, in my own life. First Chronicles 16, 28. 29, I beg your pardon. The word of God says, Give unto him, unto the Lord, the glory that is due to his name. He says, Bring an offering and come unto him. Then the last ver part of that verse says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You know, Greg, when people look at that word holiness, they all strange the way people interpret that word. But here, holiness is tied with giving. Wow. My God. My God. <laughs> so when you give, you're holy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's strange. Yes, sir. He said, bring an offering and come before him with that offering. Then it says, do what? Worship Amen. God in the beauty of, of holiness. Amen. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. My God. My God. My God. Greg, a young man in my church did not like giving. He told me later. I didn't know. But I was preparing for a conference. So I was getting people to give. I didn't start on time. So I had to ask people to give. A, for, for our people. I asked them to give. $3,000. Which for the average Nigerian. Especially at this time. Is a lot of money. A lot. A lot of money. And this man came out. He said, I can't understand. I don't know what moved me to come out. He said, something just moved me and I came out. And he gave, wrote a check for the money. I didn't even know he was in the church. You know, there's some people who are there, but you don't know. They hide. But he was telling me later than in, that in his family... Before you turn 50, people die. Men, the men in the family. You know, here in America, um, you know, there's, 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 there's witchcraft, but, but, but it's in trippy suit. Smelling good. So you don't even know that there's witchcraft. It's a lot of witchcraft activities. Anyhow, people were dying. And at this time, he was 49. And he began to hear voices. He was hearing voices. He was 49 years old. He was hearing voices telling him, you're going to die. He wasn't very serious with his faith. But then he gave this money. Two nights later, he was lying down on his bed. Watch this. About 3 a.m. in the morning, Something lifted him from his bed. Was from his bed. I learned there are some universities in Europe where they study witchcraft. You don't need that university. Come and visit me. And you end your degree just like that. <laughs> you were just sweet with us. You will end your degree. <laughs> he was, now he wasn't dreaming. He was awake. He just saw himself rising from his bed. 
as high as this. And he was gradually moving from his bed. And he had a silent voice saying, you are going to die. And the only word that he could scream was, Jesus! And the power dropped him. And he landed back on his bed. He's still alive. At least he told me the story. He said, man of God, now I know why I came out to give that money. He said, God used it to remember me. Read Genesis 22. Verse 5, you know about Abraham. In verse 5, he said to the lads with him, with, uh, to the young men with him, he said, myself and this lad were going up yonder to worship. If you go to verse 9, you begin to see the kind of worship. He made an altar. And every altar must have a sacrifice. He arranged the wood and he placed his son, Isaac, on the altar but you know the story God stopped him in verse 12 God said now I know you fear God you did not withhold your only son from me if you read a part of verse 16 God said because you have done this thing look at verse 17 the first sentence I believe he said in blessing I will bless you the last part of that verse 17 he said this your seed this one that you placed on the altar he said he will possess the gates of his enemies i see men and women you and generations after you will possess the gates of your enemies if you believe it i want to hear your amen very powerfully giving is a form of expression of worship you can also worship by dancing and singing the only people that well i think we we probably got it from them the jews i love the way they jump they dance and africans are like that we are crazy Yes, yeah, you were with me last month. We, we, we praised God for 12 hours. We started from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 12 hours non stop. We were just dancing, singing, clapping, praising God. He came in the middle of the whole thing and he sang a little bit. <laughs> My God. And I mean, testimonies are rolling in. You know, there was just a little prayer in the middle of it. But I'm telling you, most of it was just 12 hours of praising God, praising God. And people are sharing testimonies, praising God for 12 hours. I have never done it in my life. We call it Yada 2018. We're going to do another one this year. 12 hours of just praising God. Praise is the highest form of prayer. I think I told you in, in this place, I don't know if it's here, but I was mentioning to you how a young man got married and went in, you know, himself and the, the young bride, they went into the pastor's office to sign the, the marriage register. And, and, and the lady signed. And, and, and yeah, here. Yeah. All right, the lady signed, and now it was the turn of the, the young man to sign. And as he wanted to sign, he, somebody called his name. You, you know, sometimes I say to my people, to Africans, I say, if you can do all these things, why, why is, do you let these other people 
invent all these technological breakthroughs. You know, do you know some of my people they, from Africa, they arrive in New York without a visa, without going through immigration. They don't go through customs. They just arrive in New York and arrive in someone's home. Yes, I'm telling you. No visa, no immigration, no customs, no passport, no nothing. They just arrive there. <laughs> and someone is going to universities to study. Say, what are you studying? You're studying nonsense. Come and see the real thing. It's crazy. They called his name and he heard his name and he answered his name and he died. He slumbed on top of the table on the uh, register where he was going to sign. He slumbed and died. And they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And somebody said, why don't we praise God? And they began to praise God. They were praising God. People in the church thought they were all getting happy in there. <laughs> and, and they were praising God for about 25 minutes, praising God, praising and shouting and praising God. And suddenly he lifted up his head and he sneezed. <laughs> and he said, where am I? Where am I? And the wife said, don't worry about that. Just sign, sign, sign. <laughs> She said, I will explain later. I just, just sign the thing. Just sign. Sign for me. Sign, baby. Sign. 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 Come and sign. Sign it. Yeah. Yeah. He said, but what is it? Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Just sign. Sign. Yeah. He signed. <laughs> I prophesy on you. Oh my God. Every unproductive ministry. Oh my God. Take care, son. Is there a pastor called Jude? Jude. 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 You're a pastor. Your name is Jude. Is there a pastor like that here? Jude. Something. Jude. Is there a pastor like that? You're June. Probably, probably that's what I'm hearing. Come, come. Probably that's what I'm hearing. I thought I heard Jude. June. June. Probably that's, that's what I heard. June. June. You are a pastor. You are a pastor. Yeah. Where do you... Nothing is right. That's it. Nothing is happening. The thing is, it's, 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 it's dead. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh. Something is going to happen now. I know. Now. 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 What's your name? Huh? That's your friend. Clap your hands, church. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come and clap your hands. Listen to me. That church. Look at me woman. That church. That church. That church. Somebody entered that church. And did something in that church. Yeah. 
did something in that church, then I, oh my God. Ine, where are you? Come here, come, come here. Run to me, Ine. Run here, run here. Run here, run here, run here. I'm, I'm not satisfied. Lay your hands on this woman now. Lay your hands, lay your hands on her. That thing that they put in that church. Look at me, look at me. Let me tell you, there's deliverance taking place all over this place, all over this building. All over this building, that devil is a liar. Whatever was unproductive, the Bible says there should be no barren amongst us, male or female. Whatever refused to produce begins to produce now. Business, I speak to your business, begin to produce now. I speak to your career, begin to produce now. I speak to your relationship, begin to produce now. Oh, I command you, begin to produce, 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 produce now. Well, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand clap. If you were blessed, I want you just to go ahead and give Pastor Io a good shout. Go ahead and hit the heart button. Go ahead and hit the like button and let the Lord know that you were blessed. Let Pastor Io know. Pastor Io, Don, is going to be with us for the virtual school of ministry. We talked about it the beginning of this broadcast, but I just want to remind you again today, the first ever worldwide virtual school of ministry from Legacy will begin in just about a week, Friday, September 4th. Pastor Benny Hinn, Io, Tommy Barnett, Steve Muncy, Mark Masson, Don Mandel, Morris Cirillo, with a powerful Legacy video message, a series of messages. Teresa Cirillo will be greeting the School of Ministry on the opening night, and then I'll be ministering as well on Sunday. God has given me a word. I cannot wait to present it. I can't wait to release it. And so you don't want to miss a day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then, my God, Mark, Monday morning, the virtual anointing service. I'm just telling you, get your olive oil ready now. Yes, Greg. And I would encourage each one of you, get your olive oil ready right now because this is going to be your point of contact. Yes. I cannot tell you the testimony I had when I lay my hand on the hundreds and thousands of people when I'm in the nation of the world. Suddenly, when I touch the head of that person, demon would be cast out or the person would be healed or, or something would happen in the life of the person. This is your point of contact for your miracle. And it's not just that, Don, but this is a staple of Amara Cirillo School of Ministry. There will always be a closing anointing service. And yes, it is a point of contact for your miracle. But I also declare that it is your commissioning service. You see, Brother Srillo would lay hands upon those that attended the School of Ministry because the message of the School of Ministry is John 6, 28. What must we do that we might work the works of God? There is an empowerment that is coming to you. There is a favor that is coming to you. The mantle of Morris Cirillo is all over this virtual school of ministry. And I believe that there are Elishas. I believe there are Esthers. There are great young, middle-aged, even older people that have great destiny upon their life. And God is going to release something to us through this virtual school of ministry. So that's Monday morning, but be sure that you're registered. Be sure that you're with us for the very precious, I think it's gonna be a very moving opening service on Friday night, September 4th. It will be right here, live from this Legacy Theater. Mama will be in the house. 
There'll be a very special time of tribute for Brother Cirillo, very special message from Pastor Tommy Barnett, and of course, prayer for you and for your needs and for your family. And then all day Saturday, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, and then the closing anointing service, we just talked about that on Monday morning. So get your registration in, it does not cost anything, but we wanna know that you are connecting with the virtual school so that we can get you the information so every day you know who's gonna be speaking, what the schedule is, and so that you don't miss a single day of it. Well, Don, we talked in, as we closed today a little bit earlier about the incredible sons that have been raised up past Arayo, but Ronnie Chavez in Costa Rica, an incredible thing that's happening this Friday night. Yes, all over the world, the sons are stepping up the level of their outreach, but Apostle Ronnie Chavez, and so we're giving you the graphic now that he has devoted during the month of August, each Friday, to healing and miracle crusades in the footsteps of his spiritual father. So this will be the 28th Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, we're giving you the, the information right now, the graphic, and you will receive, this is the same anointing that came on him in 1988 when Dr. Cirillo surprised him and said, Ronnie, you're preaching the crusade tonight. And that'll be on the Spanish Morris Cirillo yes. Facebook page. Yes. And then Mark, there's exciting things happening on the French Morris Cirillo Facebook page. Oh yes, la francophonie appartient à Jésus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you said, we have just started the French Facebook page called Maurice Cirillo Francophonie and hundreds and hundreds of people has already become followers and we have planned to increase it to thousands and ten thousand and hundreds of thousands in the very near future. You know, Brother Cirillo has a special love for the French-speaking people, a very special love for the Spanish-speaking people. You know, Brother Cirillo has a heart that is bigger than this world. And so wherever you're watching from today, we want you to know how special you are. And just as we close today, I wanna to say a quick word for any of you that are in the Southern California area. There is something happening here this Sunday, Don, and you know if it involves gospel music and it involves food, I'm gonna be there unless, uh, unless I'm with Mark preaching in Sierra Leone somewhere. And this Sunday, we are having the first ever gospel brunch, live music, live gospel music with Men for Christ. You're seeing on the screen right now a little image, and that is 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Our chef is off the charts. It's gonna be an incredible opportunity to fellowship, have some amazing breakfast, lunch, brunch, those of you that are not in the United States, you may have never heard this word brunch. It's kind of one of these American words, but it's kind of a combination of some breakfast food and some lunch. And so you get the word brunch. And uh, if you would like to make a reservation, use the phone number that's on the page right now. Let us know that you're coming. We'd love to see you this Sunday. I'll be there. Jerry will be there. Uh, Don, Mark, Maybe you guys will be there. I'm, I guess I'm, I'm kind of pulling you in, but there'll be a lot of uh, our staff will be there and uh, we'd love to uh, would love to see you. Well, Father, we thank you today for the privilege of standing before your presence. We thank you for the privilege today of standing before your people. And Lord, we bless them today. God, we declare, my God, that your blessing is overtaking them. Lord, we thank you for forgiving all of our sins. We thank you for healing all of our diseases. Lord, we thank you for renewing our strength. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for causing us to walk upon the high places. God, I declare that our promotion is in motion without commotion. Father, thank you for your peace. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your provision. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and amen. And just as we go off today, please use the comment section to share your prayer needs. 
We want to pray with you. Miracles happen when someone cares. We care what happens to you. You can use the phone number. There's live prayer ministers. Well, on behalf of Mark and Don, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Jerry, who I'm about to see for a little lunch, on behalf of Teresa Cirillo, our incredible first lady, who is now the president of Morris Cirillo World Evangelism. Thank you for your prayers for her. You're strengthening her, sustaining her. You're gonna see her during the virtual school of ministry. This is Greg Morrow reminding you, and you know what I'm gonna say, you are a part, because Brother Cirillo reminded us, you are a part of God's end time plan. God isn't just looking for superstars. God isn't just looking for a special this, special that. You and I are a part of God's end time plan. You are special. God has not planned any defeats for you. We'll see you tomorrow on Live from Legacy with our special guest, Pastor Benny Hinn. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name.